Hey, what up, slackers? Today I want to discuss a book called Life from Cupertino. It's written by an ex-Apple employee. I think he might still be employed by Apple. His name's Michael Higelow. And this book is about how Apple used words, music, and performance to build the world's best sales machine. Um, Apple needs no introduction. Uh, as one of the most profitable companies of our time, the story of how Steve Jobs created Apple and rebuilt the company has inspired young people as well as wannabe entrepreneurs all around the world over and over again. And yeah, so how he brought Apple back based on three different things. So the first thing is that being the most revered demigods of our time, Steve Jobs he was a master at turning storytelling into sales to get Apple from where it was to where it is today. And Jobs was just brilliant at packaging how he sees the world and his vision of the future into stories and sell us that story. And it was amazingly effective. Everybody loves a good story. I mean, Everybody. There is no exception to that rule. And even hot girls appreciate a good story. Did I just say that? Yes, I just fucking said it. Even hot girls love stories. So guys, if you're listening to this, if you can master storytelling, your little head will be so fucking busy that it even won't have time to appreciate how brilliant the big head is to get it there. So Steve Jobs and Bill Gates are like the living proofs of what I just said. One of them was a brilliant storyteller, aka sales guy, who also happens to be interested in cool IT gadgets. And the other one was a true techie, aka the nerd, who happened to hit the jackpot. And was there ever a question in who got laid more in their lifetime? Back to Apple and storytelling, the 1,000 songs in your pocket storyline? That has took the MP3 digital player world by storm and just kicked the market leader at that time, Sony, out of the picture completely. By the way, American companies have such an upper hand in competing against companies founded anywhere else in the world, including European, Canadian, or Japanese companies. Because it's got everything, I mean everything, to a superior level. The language, the culture, the aggressiveness of the management, everything. And it's not even fair because the American companies know how to work their employees so hard. At the same time, reward them with ample cash. And it's almost like putting a tiger into a cattle ranch whenever an American company enters the competition. But what I gotta say is that in the last couple of years, American companies have finally met its match in Chinese companies. The Chinese companies who are just as aggressive, unscrupulous, and have a way to get around the law poses a real threat to traditional American businesses. So now American companies, it's your turn to innovate and try to regain the lead and show us that you're not going to let these Chinese companies beat you at your game. Back to storytelling. Storytelling takes practice and it takes a lot of practice. It's obvious that Steve Jobs put in a lot of preparation into his presentations and he expects nothing less from his salespeople. Except that he doesn't want them to memorize their sales pitches because you can't tell a good story simply by reciting it. You have to really feel it and live it in order to convey that true emotion. By the way, who are the salespeople of Apple anyway? Are those the brilliant individuals wearing blue working on the floor in every Apple store? Honestly, I really didn't know they're the crown jewel of Apple. So Apple's true strength lies within its sales prowess, top down, all the way from the CEO 
down to its salespeople on the floor. By the way, in any company, the sales team definitely throws the best parties around because usually they've got the hottest girls. But don't judge a book by its cover because girls will tell you how skinny nerds are never shy to impress in bed if they were ever given an opportunity to do so. The second killer weapon that Apple has was really to make products that people want but people don't need. You know what else people also want but don't need? Hot girls. Which you definitely don't need, but every time you think about them, you get a hard on. So Steve Jobs has a deep understanding of one aspect of human nature, which is that you can never trust it when people tell you what they want. You really have to dig under the surface and trust your gut feelings to arrive at what they're really saying. And that is what's so special about Steve Jobs. By the way, I hope he didn't get that skill from the infamous no means yes frat hazing rituals. The other characteristic that the author revealed about the Apple sales team was that a lot of them were musicians. So I guess if you can't make it as a musician, at least you can always settle your ambition as an Apple sales guy. But it's kind of like those college athletes who are never good enough to go pro, but they still can have a plan B to become Wall Street douchebags. But I think it's ridiculous to say that People on the Apple sales team are good listeners because they're musicians. First of all, musicians don't fucking listen to anybody else but themselves. That's, that is almost like saying porn stars can make very good food critics because they've sampled so much more than an average individual in their lifetime. And the other thing is that sales for Apple was always more relationship based rather than transactional. Because in an analogy, musicians really know how to control the rhythm of a sale and how to maintain the buying temperature while building that relationship with its potential customer. Man, I thought musicians are always just too good for making money. Little did I know that they can also be little sneaky bastards. The author also points out that these salespeople, they know how to effectively use a long silence in a presentation to hook their audience's interest. Yeah, like that. Which today isn't necessarily a good presentation tool, but rather probably just means that you have really laggy internet connection. And the third component that allow Apple to build such a massive empire according to the author, was the human element that was really the key to differentiate Apple from any other company. So the slogan, Think Different, was very successful because it defined who they are as a company, but not just the product specs of Apple when you think of Apple. And by the way, Think Different, that's grammatically incorrect. It should be think differently. So the other takeaway may be that bad grammar may be surprisingly effective at marketing. Although we're trying to make America great again, it might actually pay off to hire some fobs to come up with your next slogan. And also, instead of targeting middle-aged chumps who are just fed up with their work, life, and family, Steve Jobs, he knew that the best spokespeople for Apple are gonna be on college and university campuses. And yeah, I'm sure Steve also appreciate the number of hot girls that are walking around on college campuses as well. And the last thing is that Steve Jobs was adamant at replacing the square tables in the cafeteria on the Apple campus with the round tables. I guess the only exceptions would be those square tables with the rounded corners, get it? So in summary, these three things, storytelling, making things people want but do not need, and also the human element really was there to make Apple 
the most cash-rich company the world has ever seen. 